I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Uh, I just got in Pokemon mm -hmm. uh, all the badges, and now I have to okay. go to some forest and find the one legendary Pokemon. Uh, uh, I think. You have you have Shield, right? I do have Shield. So you gotta find that that uh, Zamazenza or whatever the however the whatever however you is. pronounce that name. Yeah, I, I'm I'm bad at name pronunciation yeah. on a good day, mm -hmm. which uh, we got we got called out. Oh, did from we? last last time's episode? Yeah, uh, I guess it's. Texarkana. Texarkana. Uh, Texarkana. Uh, Clay called me out. Let me check Twitter real quick uh, to make sure okay. I got that right. Because Clay's from Cal uh, is is from Texas. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Do, 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 it's hard do, with the Southish with mostly white populations because, like, the, do you throw in that like the uh, like the drawl, the Southern drawl, or do you do like the extra white people just make letters really sharp? I'm like, extra it could white go people. Go either so way. Oh yeah, it's I did a twenty three me. I'm sure that I, we brought this up before. I thought yeah. I was going to learn some really cool, interesting stuff, and no, no. There's I'm bleach. I, I actually might have more interesting stuff in me, mainly because I know for a fact I'm at least a quarter Polish. There's, yeah, I've got the Polish. It was like seven. Seven, I forget the exact numbers. I could pull them up. I'm like seven to 12 kinds of white. Oh, yeah. Actually, no. Let me correct that. I'm definitely seven to 12 kinds of white. Yeah. I, I'm a melting pot of white, but yeah. I'm as... I, basically, it's as though you took a bunch of white chocolate and different types of white chocolate and threw it in a melting pot. You still get white chocolate. Yeah. That's all it is. The it's just you got a bunch of, of chocolate. <laughs> You're naming the worst kind of chocolate. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you're absolutely not wrong. It, although, I will say, there was a hot second back in the 90s when I actually liked cookies and cream. You know, now that you say that, the cookies with the Oreo bits in them? Yeah. That's not For a too hot bad. second. For that's a hot second, bad. that was okay. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it's not the absolute worst thing you can have. It I'd isn't. rather have... I'd rather have regular chocolate or dark chocolate. Dark chocolate number one. Fair. Fair. I love the I love the special like the dark chocolate special bites that you can get around like Christmas. Yes. The like little yeah. ones. Those are deadly. <laughs> I'll do dangerous things for those Hershey's chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I'm just saying they're good. They are good. You probably like them a little too much, but they're good. Yeah, well, I like a lot of things uh, a little too much. But I mean, that's, that's true. That's uh, literally my your, MO. Uh, your YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I did end up... that. <laughs> so that episode was not supposed to be 40 minutes long. There's like I got the, the first one with the intro we were going over like everything. I was like, okay, that's a long one. And then I was like, all right, he's just uploaded something new. It's 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Well, because I like, I like talking about action figures, and when I get into it, I forget myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say I recorded two that will never see the light of day because the audio is garbage, uh, and in those two, they were twenty minutes long. So I did better. There's, I mean, you could probably shelf those two, keep moving forward, and then by the time those are sort of an old memory re-record them so it's not the most boring thing for you well honestly it's not the most boring well the one i'm not going to re-record because i thought it was terrible and the craftsman did a way better job at talking about the thing that i talk mm -hmm. about so i was just like yeah that's i'm going to call that a uh, a gimme the other one i am going to re-record because i wanted it to be my first episode because it's something you can actually get in stores right now okay which unlike most of my collection which is you know you have to perform you have to sell a body part to get a hold of some of them yeah so 
I did start a project based on a Craftsman video. You did? Which one? Yeah, the um, the wood and epoxy resin jewelry. Oh, that's a good one. Because I'm going to make these really pretty things. I've got a lot of nice bits of wood, mm-hmm. and I have resin and all that already for doing inlays. So I'm going to make a really beautiful piece of jewelry. I did one. Um, it's not done. I just put the resin in. Um, mm-hmm. It's a chocolate bird's eye maple, and I put aluminum oxide on the peaks of where everything broke. Did the clear epoxy resin. Then I have to shape it, and I'm just going to put really foul words engraved onto the side and just leave them around. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to have these beautiful pieces of art that and nobody they're just, can, they're no one could do anything with. Yes. that That's an art statement right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a statement you just made. <laughs> Mostly just because I think it's funny. No, I think it's great. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything else from you. There's you shouldn't. You should. <laughs> it's my whole thing is like, how can I make something that a lot of people enjoy, and then really narrow the scope and tell it's a really niche thing that almost nobody's gonna like. I mean, that's basically our podcast. Yeah, not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the um. So the the funniest thing, uh, yes. Oh God, I don't even remember. My brain just went. I'm really good at podcasting. There's you realize this so is almost good. this is almost our 60th episode. 59. Yeah, that's how almost 60 works. Yeah. <laughs> And I still don't know how we did it. I also uh, ran out of my list of things that I knew I had enough to get an episode out of. So, and this one came from an obscure place. So, uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to do some digging. All right. Yeah. So, I guess I guess if you have anything you want to talk about, uh, us to talk about, now's the time. I have a lot more left, but... You have a lot more left? Yeah, I do. I'm, I, I know a lot of obscure cryptids, Brandon. There is, is there an, oh, I could also do like a, a combo episode again. One of those mixed bags. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's Venezuelan hairy dwarves. I found that a while back. I don't Wait, know if that's a what? full episode. Yeah. I have, so I have a list. You this is my, the, I want to I wanna hear about those from you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I read about it a long time. So this, this hasn't been updated in a while. Let me say, um, we could always talk about ghost stories of Kingston at some point. There's a few of those. That's true. We could always start slipping a little uh, paranormal Look, type things in. Yeah, I think I think we should probably start slipping some ghost stuff in because I think we're gonna hit a we're gonna hit a critical mass if There's, we don't. It's kind of like it's scary, but also a little exciting. Like, how much skin is on our teeth? Like, how <laughs> how how long will it? Because it started taking longer and longer and longer to well come up with and i know we haven't really had any of the the like crazy big ones we did a few of them but it yeah. turns out that the really big ones well it, people find them interesting and no more people would know those um there's just nothing on them yeah it's it's actually startling how boring some of the big like, ones are one or two people claim they saw something once and they went it seemed weird and then that's all they know about it and then mm-hmm. those are the really big ones that everybody knows well, there's a there's a uh, Japanese magazine called Mu. Moo, like uh, Moo, as in like Mew, as okay, in like the, M-U, Mew, like the, M-U. What, the symbol, the Mew, the yeah, symbol, like the symbol. Okay, yeah. Um, they have it at Mitsua. They, there's like a the um, what's it called? It, it's the the Kinokuniya. They have it at Kinokuniya. Okay. Um, it's like a magazine of just like weird stuff. That, as I would expect in a Japanese uh, store. Yeah, it, it's a it's a magazine of weird stuff that. Um, let me let me send you a the Google. Well, that's a picture. I'm gonna send you this real quick. Oh no! Wait, oh, um, I hit the wrong button. I don't want to share my screen. I want to open the uh, the chat. Oh, there we go. Click. So double click. Single click. Yeah. Double click. click. Um, there we go. It's like this bizarre oh. magazine. <laughs> like truly oh, bizarre. I like. And I I've been contemplating buying uh issues of it so I can like Google translate the whole thing. You should. Um, because I feel like there's an untapped well of things to talk about. It's called Super Mystery Magazine. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, Super Mystery Magazine Mew. And uh, it is wonderful. It looks interesting. It, it actually right. looks it actually looks really interesting and it's like a very Japanese sensibility about how it's laid out. Oh yeah. And you know what I'm not... talking about, right? Yeah. Like cuz like an, an American magazine looks different than a Japanese magazine which looks different than a British magazine which looks different than a Chinese magazine. Mm -hmm. Um Well, there's but... usually a lot um I think it's just the different styles where like American magazines try to be pretty clean for the most part and then they'll throw like little blocks of ads along the yeah. like edges whereas japanese um magazines and a lot of television even there's so much going on all of the time in both the images and where the text is where it's like all image all text there's just a lot of like uh like visual noise because we're not used to it exactly yeah i mean that's that's really the the core of it, it's not a value judgment either way. It's literally just, we're not used to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's coming from me, who spends a lot more time uh, in, like, Japanese stuff all the time. So. Oh, yeah. Because that's just where my shit aligns. Um, so, really quick, yeah. I was looking on you. Uh, I, I was Googling around for it. Okay. And I found this. On eBay. Oh, uh, no. What is it about to enter into my life? Is it something so, I can't unsee? Not really, but it's a thing that came with it. Let's see. Super mystery. It's, it's a oh, magazine. I scroll down a little bit. It's... What is it? Super mystery... Al Mew Uma Owlman figure. New Japan yep. exclusive. Oh. So, I guess there's an Owlman... Um, also, interestingly, it's the Namaki office of the Fortean Picture Library. So I guess they're related to the magazine of Fortean Studies or something like that. Um, huh. yeah, they have a bunch of stuff. Like, they do a bunch of, like, uh, little things that you can get from them. Like, oh, they have a Goatman figure. Uh, I love the old Goatman bit from Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. I didn't see that. Uh, I, it's just a guy tries to talk, but then he bleats for no reason. God. All right. I just found another thing that's really great. This is, uh, this is, this is a rabbit hole. Uh, uh, Super Mystery Magazine. Google it. Uh, search it on, on eBay and just look at all the beautiful things you can find. Yeah. Make because, sure you turn off safe search. Well, maybe don't turn off safe search. Maybe don't. Maybe do. Maybe don't. Maybe do. Let me turn off safe search for you. There's... And do those searching. Because that's, that's my job. Listen, as soon as I learned what safe search did and how to turn it off, that shit's never been on. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Since I was a child. <laughs> you know, that whole thing with, like, are you 18 or whatever? Worst, worst test ever. Worst <laughs> test like, ever. Yes. Can, can you read yes or no? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Actually, there's really no good test because if you, even if it just asked for your taste in things, I would I would fail every time. Oh, I would super fail, Brandon. My room is filled with Transformers toys. If they were trying, I I bet you any amount of money that Google has me pegged as like a twelve year old child <laughs> with really weird. Actually, yeah, with re no, yeah, no, probably, yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm almost positive that I'm I'm pegged as a twelve year old child or something like that. Yeah. No, we probably both are. Or we're on, like, a list. I'm definitely on a list. Yeah. There's no question in my mind that I'm on a list. I buy a lot of stuff online for, like, doing woodworking stuff that is also just used in other nefarious endeavors. Yeah, that, that'll happen. Yeah. That'll happen. I buy a lot of random... I make a lot of random uh, hobby store purchases, too, where, like, I'll pick up resin one day, and then I'll pick up some other thing that's just like, why are you doing that, John? <laughs> There's, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the one, the time that I pick, picked up a bunch of Sudafed, though, that really got me in trouble. There's, listen, for inlays for my guitars, I had to order bags of um, aluminum oxide, which you could also uh. use in the making of thermite. So yep. it's could go either way. 
Oh boy. I have yeah. a lot of solvents and stuff for like different finishes on guitars and, and spray like spray painting and stuff. You know you know what my favorite part of Mythbusters was? Um they would make thermite all the time. But they would be like, we're not going to tell you how to do this. But if you go on Google and search Thermite, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we made it in um, uh, chemistry class in high school, or at least I did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Where we took uh, it out behind Maruzic. the cafeteria. Yeah, I Maruzic mean, I wasn't going to say any names. <laughs> well, I'm going to say names. Do you want to bleep that? I don't really care. There, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not looking to spend that much time. Um I'm so, not gonna tell I'm not gonna say all the weird things that I remember from, from high school. I won't talk I won't go into any rumor shit. There's yeah. There's I'm so excited, a little bit worried. I just got a text from my sister and in all caps it says get wrecked R E K T. And now it just says downloading, so there's an image coming. So I know my sister and this could go many directions. That's a lot of ways that could go, yes. I am aware of your sister as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, she just caught uh, Zakian, Z Z Z the sword uh, legendary, I believe. Oh, she's way past you, Brandon. Yeah. Like, way past you. Yeah. And I've had off for almost two weeks now. Yeah. Man, time off is, like, weird, and it really shows you that time is a uh, a flat circle, doesn't it? Yeah, because I thought I would have had time to do so much more stuff, like yeah. research another cryptid or clean the house. I actually successfully cleaned my house. I will put that out there. There's, I cleaned and then I made it messy again right away. Well, that's that's the nature of owning a home. Yeah. That's yeah. It goes with the territory. Yeah. So, should we start talking about what people probably want to hear soon? I think no. I, you know, I'm just gonna dive right in. No, There's, I don't think we should. There's all right. So welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will bump our mics and take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of paranormal, the folklore. Um, I read everything out of order. Pretend I read it right, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and you are encroaching on my intellectual property this week. There's like I slept in. I like my hair's not done yet. I didn't shower yet. There's I just made a cup of tea. It's you gonna, it's are gonna be an interesting one. You are infringing on my intellectual property. Or like thereof. <laughs> what? Oh oh wow. Ah uh, yeah. Wow. I got some shade to throw. Roasting me. <laughs> that physically hurt. <laughs> You've been playing too much Pokemon. No such thing. Uh, disagree, but continue. Okay. Uh, <laughs> today's monster is a shapeshifter, and it appears as horses, big cats, uh, and rabbits, along as a few other things. Its origins lie in Ireland. Uh, it came about in the Middle Ages somewhere, and it's not really seen anymore. Do you have any guesses on what it could be? And you could probably guess if you already went to the folder, because I already shared in the broadcast folder. I already went to the folder, but I would have been able to guess this because yes. I had a D&D &D character who was named oh. after this particular cryptid. Really? Who was that? Yes. Puka. Mm. Mm-hmm. He was a, uh, he was a corgi. Corguin. Yeah, he was a Corguin or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's, uh, he was I did not chaotic know evil. That. Yeah, it's officially connected. Yeah, he was chaotic evil, and he was named after the Puka. Um, yeah, I kind of destroyed the first session of a campaign with him because I played him actually chaotic evil, like super LOL random evil. There's we had a campaign where he, I forget the, was he flying on the back or was he just controlling a dragon? Uh he was interacting. He was like the. He was like the mid boss of the campaign where he was like always involved in everything and he kept showing up. Well, he full blown like the start of one of the narratives like wrecked a town and we had to escape. And then when we got to uh, other checkpoint, we started getting some more backstory on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. I totally forgot. Yeah. The, like basically you guys didn't want to play game with the, the like whole uh, Gravity Falls style campaign that I come up with. So I decided, screw it, I'm going to destroy the town. Yeah. There's, and I destroyed the town just with shy Puka. of, like, Rocks Fall. 
You're just yeah. like, oh, we're going to burn it all down. Yeah. It, I had, like, this whole idea for that, and it was, like, supposed to be, like... I had, like, three adventures planned in that town before you guys went to the bigger world. And then you guys got bored with it, so I was like, all right, let's ruin this town forever. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, It was a Twin Peaks... Uh, Gravity Falls inspired town. I called it mm-hmm. Twin Falls. Yes, you did. I can't believe I remember oh, that shit. off the top of my oh, head. Oh, no. No, memories are flooding back in. I'm remembering the layout of that town. Like that God, initial I town think... and like the going from the different buildings and like doing like investigating. Yes. I, I probably still have the map somewhere on my computer. Oh, geez. I would yeah, not I, be surprised. I homebrewed that whole fucking campaign yeah. too. <laughs> There's... I know at one point there was a danger room I wanted to do based off the fairy uh, from Norland Strange. From what? Uh, it might still be on Netflix. Uh, Norland Strange was a, a really good show that they had that was based on a book. And then <clears throat> in Elder Scrolls Online, there was um, the Mad God, uh, uh-huh. the Daedra. There, he did a, a thing that was pulled... Like it was almost my exact idea for the danger room, but I got to play in a video game, and it was fantastic. That's pretty great. Yes. Um, um, I before we go on, I have been keeping this a secret. I haven't been keeping this a secret from you. I just haven't told you yet. Uh, Lissa wanted to play Elder Scrolls Online, so we've been playing Elder Scrolls Online. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. I uh, we're uh, Eldamiri Dominion, so. Okay. The uh, I'll have to log back in and reallocate. All of my skill points. The one thing they still haven't fixed is whenever they do a major update, it wipes out all of your yes. point allocations. So you just have to yeah. memorize that. Or it's an opportunity to replay. Although at this point, I really just put it. I have everything basically maxed out. Um, yeah. But I did beat the game, so I can just pop in wherever you guys are in the world. So it's weird because it's like they, they... Yeah, Puka, he was a dwarf. His true race was Corgan. I found the I found the uh Oh, did you? Uh thing. I I have a spreadsheet and it's literally um it there were several characters who had alternate like lives and I was keeping track of them and I had stat blocks and everything. Mm-hmm. Um the there was a tavern called the Lonely Spider. There were some shops. I made yeah. some generic characters with a randomizer. I still have the yeah. entire campaign here. The uh, the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild expansions yeah. have some stuff that make it worth getting, like um, sneak attacks that you get. So, you, like, if you creep around a dungeon and you get kind of close, somebody can sneak attack and not alert other people. You get some other stuff where you can get away from uh, the cops easier. I Oh, that was funny because I accidentally tried to pickpocket a ghost. <laughs> um... And when we were going into town, Lissa was able to run to the the way shrine easily, and I get stopped by a guard, and I'm like, like I'm I'm wa- running on my horse, and I'm like, yeah. what just happened? There's, I think I have my horse maxed out. Even I'm not, I don't I don't remember. I Jeez. think I do. There's well, wait, you. What do you guys you, get? I've played that game for years. Yeah, I know. Well, I played with you at the beginning, and then I stopped playing. Yeah. What do we get? Yeah, like what 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 what's your race? What's your class? Uh, Lissa's a Khajiit. Okay. Uh, she's a Nightblade. Okay, I hate them. They're annoying in PvP. I'm a, I'm a Khajiit Dragon Knight. Okay, Dragon Knight all the way. Also a Dragon Knight. I, my Some first character is, my first character is a Sorcerer, though. There's, I mean, they, And he's an Imperial. They nerfed the Dragon Knights a little bit, which is fine, but, like, I didn't make mine super tanky. I sort of went mix, and you can do some wacky shit. Especially if you... Oh, become a vampire. Totally worth it. You have to do that in Riften. God damn it. No, it's great. Not... Once you get the vampire ult, it's so good in PvP. Uh, God damn it. This is what happens when I talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> the I mean, the game is a lot better than it was when it started out, though. Oh, when yeah. I first was playing with you, like, five years ago, it has become a whole different game. Oh, yeah. They I got I also stuff kind of appreciate the fact that it's not, like, areas are not level-bound anymore, and it's all kind of, like, you can go where the hell you want. Oh, I was unaware. Yeah, they did that. Like, once you... 
beat the main storyline, that stopped being a thing on its own anyway. Yeah. So I'm just used to it being I can do and go wherever. Yeah, they changed it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Anywho, uh, I've distracted us long enough. Oh, yeah. Pookas and things. Um, yeah. I would also like to give special thanks to the very Irishy, but clearly from New York construction worker at the two, two parlor uh, for showing up and talking about this cryptid tattoo that he wants uh, with me because he gave me the idea for the episode. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, now there's a thing I can research. Oh, God. Yeah. It's pronounced Pooka. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the Irish word for goblin, spirit, or sprite. It's a mythical creature that shifts its shapes and mainly takes the form of some different animals. For your information, the chatty Irishman was getting a black dog uh, tattoo with red eyes cause to be like a puka face, and it looks pretty cool. That's also um, that's also very similar to Churchyard Grimm's and... Um... There's a lot. There's like seven uh, Irish things that are all just like spooky dogs. What's what's the name of it? It's uh, like the a black dog of Bungay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's several yeah. dogs with red eyes. Black dogs with red eyes is a common motif. Oh yeah, very much so. Uh, the legend of Pukas goes back to the Celtic myths. Celtic myths? Celtic. I'm going to go Celtic. Myths of Irish lands. Uh, some theories suggest that the word Puka is coming from the Scandinavian year word uh, for nature spirit. Uh, Puk? I'm assuming it's Puk or Puki. Or it's spelled Puke. Yeah, I, I think it's Puk. Yeah, I think it's Puk as well. Uh, believed to belong to the Fey race. Uh, creatures who are known for their supernatural powers and their ability to connect with nature. Pukas are commonly known as evil creatures who are able to change their shapes and originate from uh, different stories in Scotland, I Ireland, and some of the neighboring areas. Uh, folks all over the uh, Celtic cultures in northwestern Europe knew the legend of the puka with different versions. For instance, uh, in Cornish cultures, they call it the buka, uh, and a buka is a water spirit uh, goblin or merman who lived in mines and coastal areas during storms. While the Welsh civilization, uh, <laughs> they knew it as Puka, P W C A. That's that's the spelling I use for my character. Is it? Yes. P W C A. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I always intend. I basically was looking for dog related mythical characters from oh, okay. Celtic uh, history because all of my every single one of my D and D characters is has a basis on something that exists before in okay. some way with the exception yeah. of niava niava was the only original character that i made um all, all my characters i made to just be fun and interesting and not min max N niava was my only min max character yeah <laughs> uh eason grim was named after a type of like uh it, it's literally like dark mask or something like that it was a wolf yeah. name uh, Zaphod's named after Zaphod Breebelrox. Puka's named after this. Gorgo's named after a lizard, a French lizard. The, uh, yeah, Din Vizel, I rearranged the letters of Vin Diesel's name. Mm -hmm. Uh, Plundar was a pirate. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, th there's, I have a few other characters. They're all goofy names. What was, what was the actual name of your Tengu character? I can't even remember anymore. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the I Tengu. Think, I think, I think it was one of those things where I gave the name, the Tengu a name in story, and that just became its name. Yeah, you gave him a name because at that point when it was just starting out, and because of how Tengus work, I just had a soundboard I was using. Where yes. Where just replicate noises. Um, so his it name was, was really some, funny. His name, I think, was just something that you couldn't pronounce at first before he started, like, going out into the world and, like, learning sort of like actual speech and stuff where his yeah, name yeah. was just like he'd open his mouth and it'd just be like I, don't know, I just made up some something like the sound of like wind blowing through so like because he they, they just replicate yeah. noises yeah it was it was fun yeah that was that was the character that you made when your last character was way too evil that he was immediately after plundar correct yes where immediately I, you, I was like you i was like it doesn't make like plundar start taking some dark twists on yes. his own and i was like narratively there's no way there's no way for him to naturally in a way the character what that made sense for the character for him to like go back on the right path so i just oh no disappeared he was him P blundar was on a dark path he was on a very dark path and gorgo was enabling it yes <laughs> that to be fair that happened with a lot of my characters where i'm like 
either wanted to start another character or wanted them to start going in another direction, but I was like, it doesn't make sense in game for them to go the direction I want them to go. So they're going to go away. I think you more than any other person I've ever played D and D with have basically killed off your characters more on purpose. Oh yeah. I don't play when, when I DM, it's not really a kill campaign because I, I no. kind of, I've always been of the opinion that it's like big damn heroes doing big damn stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you have on multiple occasions sacrificed your character. Oh yeah. <laughs> because you were done with them. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what happened to Din V like she sacrificed herself and turned into like a statue. And then like I know like I could tell you're dropping hints because there were definitely points where an NPC clearly was like, you know, you don't have to do this because you you could solve the big bad problem this alternative way, even though we presented the self sacrifice as a solution. There are more than one way to skill a cat that doesn't result in your character's death. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just I, like, I was. No, I have to do it. The NPCs were kind of like mortified that you went for it so quickly because I wasn't expecting you guys to do that. The actual solution that I was expecting was for you guys to sacrifice some magical items. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, you're, you're, you're like, oh, someone has to sacrifice them. Like before you got to like also magical items and stuff. I was just like, yes, all right, done. Because I think at yep. that point I already had another character sheet made. You, yes, you already, you. you already had what's his name ready at that point. Uh, and then I ruined your voice with him. Oh, Scrump. Well, that wasn't his real name, but I had a character that this is just going to be a D and D talk. The show where yeah, this he, this episode, he made, Brandon. Yeah, you brought up you brought up one of my previous characters' names. You invoked one of my previous characters, so this just became D and D talk. There's, like, I had a character, and he just did a bunch of different disguises, and I had voices for him. And then the one voice that blew out my throat, because it was just, like, an old-timey coal miner voice, mm -hmm. he, none of the other characters in the party knew he was some of these other characters. And they, he threw us through a portal that closed behind us, and for weeks, I had to, I had to do this damn voice because I had to stay in character, and I that's, that's when I started showing up with two bottles of water for every session. You're lucky. You're actually really lucky uh, that I decided to end the campaign, because that was supposed to be, like, a gap campaign while I tried to come up with the ending oh, <laughs> adventure. Yeah. Because I set it in the Dreamlands deliberately, because the Dreamlands, I, it would allow me to do, like, a bunch of really bizarre ideas, mm -hmm. and it would have been narratively fine, because the Dreamlands are the collective unconscious and all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you're lucky. I just lost my drive to continue being a DM for that set, like that adventure. Because yeah. literally I had, we, we've been playing that game for like three years at that point. Yeah. And my brain was just like, I need a break from DMing. <laughs> yeah. Fair. <laughs> Uh, this episode's name is D and D Talk, by the way. Oh, it should be. It's D and D Talk. D &D talk about D and D or Elder Scrolls, and I'm gone. I'm in it. Yeah. Well, that's that's we have to play D and D again, though. That's a yes. fact. Um yeah. But I need to. I need to take the time and pick an adventure. I have so many adventure books, but I need to pick the adventure. I don't think I'm gonna do Tomb of Annihilation, mm -hmm. mainly because uh, it's too death heavy for me, and I yeah. I can't do that. I can't kill people's characters. I'm I'm a wimp. Okay. <laughs> uh, you do that. I'm sure I can get... Uh, I'll see if I can't get my sister back in it. Uh, Erica might be interested in uh, mm -hmm. at least trying it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lissa's been talking about doing it again, so... Yeah. I know Falco wants to do something, too. He's mm -hmm. been... He was, he was, like, kind of... Uh, insinuating that I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think he at his place off the street that I live off of, I think they've been doing some kind of weird um, sessions. That sounds about right. Yep. That also sounds more sinister than uh, you probably were intending to say. They've been doing weird sessions. Yeah, I only say it like that because I can't really picture uh, that crew having like a solid uh, DM. So that's the only reason uh, why I say weird sessions. Nick is probably the best DM in the bunch, I'd say. There's, I would believe that, actually. Yeah. I could see him getting way into it. 
As for the he, Channel Islands between both England and France. <laughs> <laughs> we spent literally 20 minutes talking about D&D. Yeah. Uh, I'm people, sorry, folks. People known as the Pook Pequay. <laughs> Oh, uh, in particular, inhabitants of the Channel Islands uh, believed the Puke were fairies who inhabited the areas around ancient remnants. Views and tales of the Puka differ from one area to the other. In some regions, uh, dwellers respect Puchas, sorry, Pukas, uh, more than fearing them. While in other spots, most of them, most of them, in fact, uh, they just fear the Pukas. Some I mean, stories they... state what. They bite the ankles. They bite the ankles. Mm -hmm. uh, some stories state that pukas show up uh, from one time to another, especially in November, to give people advice or to warn them about some unpleasant news that might happen to them. Uh, as the beliefs of how a puka would treat humans differ, the stories and beliefs of how a puka would look also differ. The version of the story uh, mainly varies from one place to another. In County Down, the puka would take form of a tiny malformed hobgoblin and ask for a share of people's yield. <laughs> yes, give me that. Yes. <laughs> yes. I request some corn. Mm, yes. Leave it on the cob. Yes. I, I, I like the corn on the cob quite a bit. I require a third of your milk. Only a third. If you give me more, I get bloated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what say you for wheat? 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 Why, I require why you, wheat. Why are you pronouncing the H? I'll also accept barley. All right, you're just sidestepping my question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you talk <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, in I'm gonna assume this is Laos. Well, in country or county Laos, L A O I S, uh, mm -hmm. they take the shape of a huge scary boogeyman. Uh, even more uh, in oh man, I'm sure. Wow. There's I'll say that even more in Roast Common, uh, as the puka takes form of a black goat in both Waterford and Wexford, the puka takes form of a big eagle with really uh, like a really big wingspan, just an oversized so eagle. The puka's basically just every cryptid we cover on this podcast ever. It's all of the things. Yeah. And, it, like, it's a, it's a small area where it's super regionalized for, a, like, a rather small area to begin with. Yeah. Like, Ireland, Wales, Scotland. Like, not, not big. Yeah. Uh, apart from the fact that the puka's form would be different one region to another, pukas have three main common characteristics. First, they either have red or sparkly golden eyes. Second, they have dark black fur or hair, but all above, pukas have the ability to speak, which is why they prefer t uh, why they prefer taking human forms. Uh, but to put it differently, pukas take human form to trick people, chat with them, give them advice, or even give forecasts for the upcoming year. So the pukas, see, all of them. Yeah, so see, from my perspective, though, if I was a puka... I would take just really upsetting forms. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I'd, I'd take the form of a cat, and then while someone was going to the bathroom, I'd just walk in and be like, sup? There's, and then oh, walk out. Yeah. Or I'd be like a... I'd be a dog, but with human teeth. Mm. How about a dog with, uh, with human hands? This is going dangerously back to Dungeons & Dragons talk. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about Donkey. He forgot about Donkey. <laughs> literally, oh. literally in my Instagram is Donkey oh, underscore Hands. God, yes. That let's let's because we've already de devoted twenty minutes to D and D this episode, and there's still most of the copy left. Let's let's leave that for another yeah, time. Yeah, short version. There was a Donkey, but he had human hands. Yeah. Uh, until a very recent time, the Southern part of county Farmangach. Man, uh, these words are great. Oh, yeah. People used to gather uh, on specific far-up spots. They wait for a speaking horse, which inhabitants noticed before on the occasion on the famous Bilberry Sunday. So Mr. Ed was just chilling. Oh, the best prank. Some guy just, like, puts berries on a horse's mouth and hides on the other side and says some ominous shit for, like, weather forecasts. And people are like, we must find the horse. I would not be surprised if that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, 
<laughs> They're like, next year all your all your crops will die unless you give Dave all of your whiskey. All of it. Dave requires it? whiskey. It's just popping strawberries in the horse's mouth on the from the other side. Uh, uh, Dave, is that your hand? There <laughs> is. Ignore the hand. Tis mythical hand. Uh, all right, I can't argue with the talking horse. <laughs> My tongue is a human hand. All right, well this this has now become a thing that we need to figure out. There's, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the Wicklow Mountains, uh, Liffrey River has crafted a waterfall which people call the Pula Puka, which means the Puka's hole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, go to a Denny's and have Puka hole. De- oh, yeah. I, ha- I remember when Hobbit hole was a thing. All right, we're, again, we're getting back. On, we we, we got to get back getting, to it. We, gotta, gotta, I, we, I just... we can't talk about high fantasy around Brandon. <sighs> No, that's our problem, both of us. Yeah. If we talk about high fantasy or sci-fi, we're done. Yeah. That's Which is it. hard on this podcast. Yeah. Oh, really God. hard. Also, I finished all of The Mandalorian, finally. Anyway. Oh, so good. Also, in County for uh, Ferminaga and in the Bin, La- in the Bin Laughlin Mountains uh, is known for the peak of the sneaking horse and Belku County in Fer- again, just pretend a real person is saying these words. Fermanaga, St. Patrick Wells, they're said to be uh, call- what they call puka pools thousands of years ago, but the religious Christians changed their name to the St. Patrick Wells. Just like Saturnella became Christmas. Ah! <laughs> There's, I'm going to start Brandon's Miss. Brandon's Miss? Brandon's That's basically miss. Festivus. It's basically festival, festivist, but there's more tequila. <laughs> Fair. Fair. There's, oh, I named our, our tree this year. Yeah. Yeah, it was Jessica T. Pine. Oh, that's a good name. But her friends call her T. Pine. <laughs> that's a good name. Yeah, it was a very good name. That's a very good name. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i wish i knew t pine's name when i was over oh i should have shared that with you oh pukas have the power and the ability to like shift their guys as per folklore uh brian baruma mech Kenetig, aka brian boru the high king of ireland is the only person who got to ride a puka in particular, uh, the public knows Brian for his battles against the Vikings. King Brian ruled from 941 to 1014. Um, I forgot if this is CE or BCE. Um, uh, I'm going to assume it's CE. It's Yeah. Pr- no, actually, yeah, that's almost dumb. Yeah, it's CE. I'm um, assuming CE. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, according to legend, Brian was a courageous man and was the only one who got to ride a puka, and he got to do this uh, by only using a three-hair special curb of puka's tail. Okay. Um, don't sure. ask. Just don't ask. Uh, you know, here's the thing, though, about a shapeshifter saying you are the person who rode a shapeshifter. <gasps> Maybe he was the shapeshifter. Oh, what if he turned the actual King Brian into the horse and then turned into King Brian? Like, what if horse horse kicked King Brian over, like, a cliff into the Puka Wells or something? He had all that armor. He drowned, then shape shifted to King Brian and came back and was like, yes, it is I, King Brian. I rode a Puka. And then from there on, like, oh, man. I mean, that's why he was around for 70 years. Yeah. 73 years. That's a long time to be in charge yeah, in the 900 Especially B- CE in those times. Oh, I've yeah. got a good like. I think we figured drama. out. I think we figured out that King Brian was actually a puka. He was a puka. Mm-hmm. The and uh, that means all of his de- descendants are half puka or partial oh, puka. Oh wow! And this is getting to some Carnival Row stuff now. It sure is. Yes, I never uh, finished that. There's. It was good. It, 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 it gets better as it goes along. Oh, does it? It it yeah. started out kind of weak. 
there's yeah, they're trying to like lay groundwork and then later like stuff got cool or there's like cool monsters yeah uh, okay it's, it was one of those situations where they were like they were putting the harp they were putting the the world building before the actual stuff yeah. oh got the it. witcher was also good if you haven't checked that out I haven't checked it out it is decent like imagine game of thrones but you don't have to remember so many people that's nice. Game of Thrones did have a problem where I literally didn't know who was who yeah. anymore. There'd and be then, so many people you'd be like, all right, wait, so this is this person's cousin. This is their name. But they're like, every person had this crazy convoluted what? story behind them. Uh, here's here's the shorthand. Everyone's related to everyone unless you know, unless they say otherwise. Yeah. I can't that, wait for the King Killer series to come out and the movie. Uh, I, I haven't read the books yet, so. There's, I read all of the books. Door of Stone comes out next year, hopefully the third one. Okay. We're doing it again, Brandon. Oh, sorry. We're doing it again. Oh, no. I, we're also, the so... Wheel of Time series coming out. All right, I'll stop. That. Now, Wheel of Time, I yeah. remember in middle school, you were like the only person who read Wheel of all of, Like, basically, that was you always had a Wheel of Time book. I remember oh, yeah. that. All the time. I was all the time. That. It's my Anywho. best. Se- all right, I'm stopping. Um, no, 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 no. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can wax poetic about the Wheel of Time a little bit. I'll give you this. I have I think, all of the books. I think we've gone 59 episodes without you mentioning the Wheel of Time. Oh, it's so. just the best high fantasy series ever. Um, the, if you have the audiobooks, the author, uh, they ask him why he wrote them. And he basically said, because the uh, Tolkien series was so bad and the characters were so unrealistic. Like, he I was will... driven to write the longest and the best fantasy series ever to spite Tolkien's writing. Cause he I'll little, say... Like, he literally says to the person, like, if a wizard walks into a bar and says, we need you to save the world, come follow me, you don't go, okay, and follow him. You would sneak out the back door and go, that guy's fucking nuts. I like, would absolutely, I would absolutely be like, no. That's how a real character would act. So he yes. was driven to write that, because he's like, there's no reason why any of these people should be following it. They're all just fine with this. They're just going yeah. along with it. So, like, that's why he wrote that whole series. That's phenomenal. I, I absolutely love that. Because here's the thing. While uh, Tolkien was an intelligent man and he came up with a really rich world, mm-hmm. his characters are questionable. Yeah. <laughs> like, every character is so, like, believable and realistic and does... You don't question their actions. Just like, that makes sense for this character to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll stop because I could do, maybe they'll just be one of our bonus things. I'll just talk for an hour about why that series is so great. We'll call, we'll call the next podcast wheel. There's what it's called wheel. There's literally like, he, oh, all right. Um, so Brian had the guts to stay on the, be- on the puka's back long enough to force it to surrender to him eventually. Stories say that King Brian also forced pukas to agree on a couple of terms first. First, Brian got the pukas to agree that they'll never hurt Christians or mess with their properties. Second, pukas have to agree that they would never assault an Irishman except for those with wicked intentions or if they're drunk. The Puka There's a joke the I terms. can make there, but I'm not going to touch it with a, a thousand foot pole. Yeah. Uh, also, you would not be able to lift said pole. Um, no. Nor would anybody be able to. Uh, the Pukas agreed Puka's on the good. terms. Uh, it seems that they've forgotten about it and their promises over the years. Or maybe it never happened. Or it never happened. Um, Puka's Day is mainly related to Sam Hine which is a celebration of Gales, which is a ethno-linguistic group based on the Northwestern Europe, uh, European, uh, uh, and is part of the Celtic language that comprehends Irish, Manx, and Scottish Gaelic. Yeah, which so is different than normal Gaelic? Is I that... think so, because Gaelic is, Gaelic is typically Irish. Gotcha. So Scottish um, Gaelic would have Scottish Gaelic would be something its own. It, it's bits. a little more Scottish. The accent Scott more Scottish, and it's gotcha. a little angrier. It's a little angrier. Um, the also Samwine is uh, that's basically has become Halloween for all intents and purposes. Okay, uh, Halloween is kind of like a meta 
um, thing where it's like a fusion of a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. where it's like All Hallows Eve, San Juan, and then there's a few other traditions that got mixed in, like the carving of turnips and all that stuff. Um, oh, okay. Also, that's the name. I want to some turnips. Well, yeah. Well, we carve pumpkins now instead of turnips. Yeah. Turnips, I think, get scarier as they age. Apples yes. get scary as they age. Yes. Pumpkins basically look the same until they're dead. Yeah. You're done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also, Samwine is the name of the a character from uh, Trick or Treat, which is one oh. of my favorite anthology movies ever. Yeah. Uh, it, the only thing that even comes close is VHS 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's the one with the glitch? Uh, VHS 1 is the one with the glitch. VHS 2 is the one that has the Papa? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch VHS 1 and 2. VHS 3, viral or whatever, doesn't exist. Don't don't even bother with it. It's garbage. I have not seen that. It's hot garbage. Hot garbage. 1 and 2 are good, like like anthology horror movies that were actually scary and well-written. Yeah. Oh no, they were spoop. Yeah. Uh, the first one has the like the succubus one, which is like yes. real freaky. That was so good. Real freaky. Yeah. Uh, and I think the second one has one where a guy gets a like a robotic eye or something that lets him see the dead. Oh. It's real good. Oh, yes. It's real good. Yeah. Oh. Yes. All right. People know the first of November. As Puka's Day, as the tradition goes, when it's harvest time and the harvesters are collecting crops, they have to leave some stocks behind to reconcile the Puka. This is what the public call the Puka's share, which no one can eat because obviously no one wants to infuriate the Puka. Except for Carl. Goddamn Carl. Carl! 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 <laughs> Uh, furthermore, in some places, uh, the puka spits on some fruits, especially when frost kills berries. Um, <gasps> this usually happens as November begins. This means that they poison the fruits and no one will be able to eat them. Uh, and when rain falls on a sunny day, it's an indication that the pukas go out on that specific night. Man, uh, summer must be terrible then. Yeah, must be. Uh, Douglas Haid, the folklore specialist, described the puka as a uh, plimmer sleek, terrible steed uh, that walked down from one of Leinster's hills and talked to people on the 1st of November. According to Haid, the puka provided them with intelligent and proper answers to those who consulted in the concerning uh, at all that... Uh, I'm so bad at reading. Who consulted it concerning all that would uh, befall them until November of the following year and that people used to leave gifts and presents at the hill. So they're like they're like oracles, kind of. Yeah, like an the oracle puka... horse that accepts gifts. All horses are oracles. All horses? <laughs> they're oracles? Yeah. I, I've, I've grown up around enough horses that I know all horses are oracles. There's... Listen... All equines are, uh, they're, oh, Ponyta, they are psychic now. I mean, yeah. Horses yeah. are psychics. Mm-hmm. Yes. See? Pokemon finally, they, they, they blew the lid off the whole story. They blew the lid off the story in Sword and Shield. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, a variety of Puka stories made it, uh, to publish the public, pub, uh, Book putting out industry and cinema industry. Okay, uh, got it. Got it. Yeah, I, 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 that that word is not James. coming out of my mouth today. Um, starring <laughs> the renowned actor James Stewart in 1950, the movie Harvey, uh, makers originally borrowed it from a play uh, that has the same name, was the most famous drawing of the Puka legend, uh, and the story is about a Puka with the name of Harvey in the shape of a six foot tall white rabbit. Uh, the three and a half, the three and a half inch tall rabbit becomes best friends with a man and starts playing tricky games with people around him. Uh, Puka you, is also you, represented. Yeah. Can you do me a huge favor? Yes. Um, can you inject this song when you say Harvey? Maybe. 
54 minutes in. I'll see if I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Puka is also represented in many other uh, representations, including the sto- the series Mary Gentry in the anime show Sword Art Online and the digital game oh, God. Uh, Cabal's Magic and Battle Cards. Uh, there's also this club for famous hurling games uh, in Pittsburgh, and its name is the Pittsburgh Pukas. Of course they are. Uh, in most works, artists tend to draw the puka as a wicked creature, taking the form of an animal, mostly a rabbit, uh, like the well-known children's program Nightmare, uh, spelled K-N-I-G-H-T. Uh, the creators of the program what? represented pukas as a crazy, w- wait, <laughs> as wait. crazy creatures. One second, one second. You said something there. The well-known children's... What? I've never heard of that. Nor have I. Is it is it this? There's a 112 episodes. What? What? Google that. Google that yeah. right now. This is wild. Look at the the oh, first yeah. image. Wait, the Cerberus? No. Oh, the one the, the series like, guy with the huge head. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yes. What is going on in that picture? There's like There's a dude. Eight seasons. It's a family show. It was in 1987. That's why I never heard of it. 112 episodes. Program creator was Tim Child. It was on ITV and CITV. Well, it's British. It's a British show. Yeah. That might be why it's well. Maybe you got your source from like a British source. Oh yeah. Okay. That well, that's why a few, it would be like this. The, yeah. None of Apparently, the, listen, none of whoa. the people's names who I've said sound they're not like they're clearly Irish or British. Well, okay. So here's the fact of the matter. Uh it has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Oh. So it yeah. did well. Apparently, it was well received. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Kill Jesta. <laughs> I love that. Kill the Jesta. Oh, that was, if anybody's interested, I think uh, Google Lemmy's show in Jester. It was this, so good. This is this episode, Brandon. You have picked the single worst episode for keeping us on track. I know. I mean, they should be used to it by now. <laughs> I mean, if by episode 59, you know, like, oh, they like tangents. Then well, listen. <laughs> well, well, but the problem is this episode is uniquely suited for putting us on tangents because it's so related to so many things that you and I do as hobbies. Yes. <laughs> and more importantly, <laughs> hobbies we do together. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> kill the Jester. Like, you want me to kill Jester? Oi, it's my money. It's my, it's my game. Kill the Jester. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the jester's dead. Yeah. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh the creators of the program represented pukas as crazy creatures. The same also goes uh with movies that are kind of recent, including Donnie Darko, released in two thousand and one. On the other hand, some of the some artists draw the character of the Puka as a weird, non evil creature, just like how the makers of the Spiderwick Chronicles, the children's famous fictional book series represented it see now i've heard of that yeah i haven't read it i haven't read it but i've heard of that that was the first time i ever heard of nightmare my favorite book series reading as a child outside of the ender's game series was uh i forget what it's called but each series was represented by a birthstone and if you open up a quest yes del toro quest yes 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 Yes. Uh, I love those books. So good. Uh, They were so good. The fun thing is, uh, in the very first book, the guy, like the kid is like about to, I think his name was Leaf. I want to say. He was supposed to, he was supposed to do all of the gemstones in a specific order. uh, And like his father figure told him to do this, this, and this. Yeah. And uh, when they get to the final book, they have all the gemstones in the belt and they set it up wrong because they did the belt out of order. It's supposed to be like yeah. diamond, emerald, lapis lazuli, topaz, uh, onyx, ruby, amethyst. Amethyst. 
Yeah. Because it's supposed to spell out Del Toro. Del Toro. Yes. <laughs> oh, I want to reread the whole series now. There's there's a there's like a uh, two sequel series too. What? Yeah. So there was the 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 getting the bell, and then there yeah. was like the Shadowlands. There's oh. also there's also weirdly an anime. Oh damn! All right, I know what I'm doing later. Yeah, it's on. It's actually on Crunchyroll, and it's weird. It's There's... really weird. Oh. I honestly don't even know why the anime exists or how it was created in the first place. All I remember is there was a really fun flash game back in the day. What is there? The saga yes. of Darren San. What is the? Oh, what am I looking at here now? This is oh, that's an ad. I was like, you just sent me a baby video. It's an mm -hmm. ad. It's an ad. I will say this: the characters in this anime do not look like what I imagined them as. Oh no. Okay. I have no idea why this anime exists in the first place. Oh no, it was such a good book series. That was my jam for a long time. Oh, wait, what? Oh, it was a pen name. The woman who wrote it used a pen name. Oh, Emily, was uh, it Emily Rod? It was Emily Rada, and it was actually Jennifer Rowe. Okay, this is the, like, fifth fantasy thing that you and I share in common that we've been talking about this week, and... Yeah. Oh, we, we, we need to continue the story. We do. I didn't even know you read Del Toro Quest. You didn't know I read that? Oh, dude, no. I was all about Del Toro Quest. Yeah. I had them all. Oh, I'm I even had the dragon. somewhere. They had... Oh, I, I gave mine away, but I had Del Toro Quest, Del Toro Quest Shadowlands, Del Toro Dragons... Oh, uh, so good. There's... Uh, so good. I the might book... not have time to read them given research, but I will definitely, if that shit's on Audible, be listening to that on my way to work. Brandon, the books are like 113 large print pages. Like, they're made for children. Yeah, but I've got to, like, do a lot of research for reading and stuff uh, here. You're killing me. And then you're I can also me. listen while I play Pokemons. We're we're at an hour and we're not done with the co episode copy. No, we, we should probably continue the episode copy. Okay, uh, but I, I I just you've we've awakened too many things this episode. Yeah, this is the the tangent times. Mm -hmm. uh, as Christianity started to spread, the beliefs of animal worshiping, uh, including the idea of the puka being God, started to vanish gradually. Uh, just like every other supernatural existence, Christianity tyrannized the myth of the puka. Uh, the new image of the new religion changed how people viewed pukas, from supernatural creatures and sometimes gods to harmful monsters. Um, and that's when the legend of the of the puka started to lose its significance. Um, it had and began to vanish. Some say pukas ran to North America, where people were still, uh, where people there still honor nature as well as animals. I will say that is like a plot point in American Gods. Is it? Yep. There's I've not finished that, but I did really start good. the Showtime series. Oh, there's a book. I recommend the book. There's okay. The book well, is based off really book. good. Yeah, yeah, the book is really good. I finished it. When I read that book, I was just like I, I devoured it in like two days. It was so good. Oh, nice. So good. Uh, the puka shows up here and there, now and then, uh, to different people in different pla places. The legend goes that if you have Celtic blood running in your veins, pukas will always be watching you. Uh, gross. Uh, they'll try to know you more. Gross. Um, mm -hmm. What you like. <laughs> gross. And what you don't like uh, to be able to trick you. Gross. Uh, yeah, gross. Gross. Uh, uh, and they'll play just to drive you crazy. They will stare and smile and even chat with you. Moreover, pukas, pukas will tell you stories, and in case you're not the first one to dwell in a house, they may tell you that they lived there before and will, of course, know everyone that once held property of that house. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, they will know who lost his lands and who lost his fortune or money, just like the gambits in chess, they may say uh, to try and trick you. 
Uh, pukas have the ability of human speech, and it's important to realize that during a conversation with a puka, one might lose track of time and not until the conversation uh, would last a few hours is over will you wonder what happened and whom you were talking to, uh, which sounds a lot like talking to people in bars. It sounds a lot like how I talk to people who I don't know in general. Yeah. Because, uh, like, I just, I just kind of... Yeah, hi, ba 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 ba. What the fuck did I just spend the last X minutes doing? Yeah. Uh, what's more important than the puka's ability to talk is that they also leave all, uh, just, they'll just leave all of a sudden. Um, in other words, pukas never say goodbye and they will leave you not knowing uh, if the conversation was real. To be fair, I generally leave without saying goodbye. Like, if I'm out somewhere you're, and you're just like, where'd Brandon go? I'll, just home. This went home. Yeah, honestly, most of the time if I leave, uh, if I'm leaving a place, if I know the person who's hosting, I'll say bye to them Yeah, I'll as say, like a rule, but then I'm just out. Yeah, I'll say goodbye to one person. That way when people start going, where'd Brandon go? One person can go home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm introverted. To, to be with his cats. Yes. Yes. Speaking of cats, I'm surprised my cats haven't. Jiro doesn't like it when I have the door closed to here anymore. So if he if he finds out, he's going to be meowing and breaking the door down. Oh, nice. He's basically a zombie. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Yeah. So Puka is one of the most feared mythological creatures in Irish culture. However, there's no proven evidence about them actually harming people. Just remember that once a Puka finds its way to you, games will start. Um. There's a lot of superstition and customs about puka that still are observed in Ireland. Uh, the superstitions vary depending on what region you find yourself in, although there seems to be common ground that when you talk to a puka uh, about some uh, words, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just there's uh, different it, it's a lot of stories different and minor details. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when a puka is a horse. Uh, or takes the form of a horse, he tends to have fun by inviting a rider to jump on its back. And this usually happens when the rider has had a little too much to drink and is making his weary way home from a pub. This starts the wildest trip the rider will ever know, for the puka loves to terrify the rider with great prowess, jumping over hedges and rocks and making death-defying leaps. Uh, They... Come the gray uh, dawn, the rider is thrown off the horse's back and left trembling, uh, but none worse from the night's events to find oh, his own goodness. way home. This may be where the reputation slips a little bit, uh, as while on a wild night out, uh, they, they might run through cornfields and crops and knock down fences without care. Wow. But it sounds fantastic. I would, that uh, sounds to be pretty fair, great. If I was a sentient horse, I would do the same thing. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably the correct thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so the other thing they love, um, as with all Irish people, is to chat and will happily stop and shoot the breeze with you, sometimes giving you great advice and making exceptional prophecies. Mm. In some rural areas, you'll see houses that will have a bench on the right side of the door and the gatepost on the right will be uh, smooth, whereas on the left will be uh, a rockery or some sort of uncomfortable mound. And this is because a puka will always sit on the right, and the more mischievous spirit will favor the left. So, I'm going to say this. Yes. Um, It just sounds like people are, drunk people are talking to someone, and usually when you're drunk... Uh, advice always sounds better. Yes. And things always sound more prophetic. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just just as a rule. Oh, yeah. Uh, they tend to use the same opening gambit to introduce themselves. Uh, and it will be something like, you're new here, I think. Many years ago, I used to live in this house. Um, oh, that's, that's awful. Oh, yeah. That's such an awful way to introduce yourself to somebody. Mm-hmm. It's like, I used to live here. Yeah, do yeah. you live here now? No. Okay, then please leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of his favorite topics is how the family lost their fortune or was swindled out of their money and lands. The odd thing about conversation with a puka is that you have chatted 
for an hour when they suddenly disappear without saying goodbye. Um, again, Ireland, Irish goodbye. Um, I feel yeah. like that's a racist thing to say, though. <laughs> Technically. Is it? Is it? Because it's the same as the Brandon goodbye. That's true. That's true. God damn. The Brandon goodbye. It's the same. Uh... The John goodbye is me standing awkwardly for half an hour and being like, no one's talked to me in half an hour. I think I can leave safely. Yeah. <laughs> fair. <laughs> Very fair. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, there's a lot of like, and I'm going now. Bye. <laughs> yep. That's, that's most to, of my leaving. To whoever's closest, just be like, hey, I'm leaving. All right, bye. And then leave. And then, yeah. Oh, is it going to come? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? <laughs> Oh, uh, it came and left. Oh, it looked like you were trying to sneeze. No. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so mainly associated with uh, Sam Hain, and I know we already went over this yeah. a little bit before, um, but we'll end on this, uh, yeah. is the Sam Hain, uh, the 31st of October and the 1st of November, uh, which coincides with a lot of the diff different traditional customs. Um mm -hmm. Do I even have to? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I already I think, went over this I think, enough. I think this is all literally up above. Yeah, I already covered but this. Basically, puka share. Puka share, yeah. different from the angel share. Uh, and the devil share. And the devil share. Isn't that a thing? I feel like that was a thing. I saw a commercial for like a Jack Daniel's whiskey. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, the angel share is that when as the... whiskey ages in a barrel and it. Mm -hmm the wood breathes in and out because that is what gives it the taste is it'll and when it gets hot it'll the wood it will expand and suck in whiskey and when it gets cold it'll spit that whiskey back out as the wood contracts and then the angel shares because during the whole process some evaporates out so the angel shares like whatever gets evaporated out yeah throughout there's the, the devil's process. cut that's and what i was thinking devil's about. cut I, uh, is i think what's left in the wood i think so I think when they say the devil's thing, they're literally just, like, getting shit out of the wood from barrels that you don't think they can reuse. Jim Beam. That's that's who Yeah, because it was the girl it. from that 70s show. Was the one in the commercial? Uh, which girl? Jackie? Uh, or Donna? Dark red hair? hair? Jackie's not, dark not, hair. Dark hair, yeah. It would have been Jackie then. That's, um... That's Mil the voice Mila Kunis of the sister from Family Guy. Mila Kunis. Okay, yeah. Or Mila. I don't know. She plays. I don't she know. played we She played Wow for a while. Did she There's, play Wow for a while? Yeah, she's still married to Ashton Kutcher. Oh wow! All right. Weird. Yeah. Which is kind of funny considering they were dating on the show. Oh, uh, that's cute though. Yeah. She was partners with Macaulay Culkin from 2002 to 2010. What kind of partners? Just as partners, so they probably were dating. Okay. That's kind of wild. He's yeah. associated with Red Letter Media now? Macaulay Culkin? Yeah. I know he's got his own weird like lifestyle brand. Macaulay Culkin is a character. Oh, yes. What? He's like, what the? Okay. So, you remember um, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody? Yes. Do you remember the girl, London? She was, like, one of the leads. She had brown hair. Okay. Uh, Macaulay Culkin is dating that girl from... What? Uh, or in a relationship with that girl now. Huh. Brenda Song. Okay. This is This has opened up a weird rabbit hole for me. There's here is uh oh. his lifestyle uh brand website. Actually, I think I've seen bunny ears. Yeah. I feel like I've seen this. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so right now <laughs> the first article on bunny ears is the Michelin Guide to Eating Ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This 
this website's wild because another article is white nationalism officially declared symptom of Hulkamania. <laughs> oh, did you click on the wrestling tab on the top? Oh, no. Uh, here's another one. Color of the month. The slightly gray skin under your exhausted eyes. <laughs> the, all the real athletes, the WWE, should debut to confuse its fans. This is a uh, insane thing. Yeah. What? Pro wrestlers ranked by their dad bods. <laughs> this is a this is a this website in itself is a cryptid. Yes. Oh, Watch. they have a new video, Macaulay Culkin's Monopoly cheat. What? 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 <laughs> oh, this is a joke. Okay. Oh, for a second, I was really concerned. So they have a video called My Strange Affliction, Macaulay Culkin. Oh. And it's a joke episode about someone's affliction with Macaulay Culkin, like, like obsession with Macaulay Culkin. Oh, okay. And she's like wearing a Macaulay Culkin t-shirt that has pizza on it for some reason. I don't know. I think, I think this episode's done. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Once, once Macaulay Culkin gets pulled out, I think we're done. There's, there's an article called, remember when Rainbow Bright killed someone? What? <laughs> oh. What? Oh, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's. I'm, I mean, you can. I'm, so you could. You could get lost in this website. I've already been lost in this website. Color of the month. <laughs> this is horoscopes. Horrifying. Who you'll come back to haunt after you die, based on your sign. Okay, wait a second. This is important. Where was that one? I need to read that one. That is That's important. Like, like copy and paste. It, is it under lifestyle? Yeah, it's on the right side uh, under lifestyle. Who am I, I going to haunt? Who a gonna haunt? Aquarius. I'm haunting Bill Cosby. I'm going to haunt the cast of Dawson's Creek. That's fair. This, oh, here, here's the blurb. It says, this one is less about spooky haunting and more about your own voyeuristic tendencies that will be fully enabled after your death. You were always obsessed with Joshua Jackson, Katie <laughs> Holmes, Michelle Williams, and James Vanderbeek. Now you can spend decades watching them eat cereal and poop. <laughs> this is amazing. So Capricorn is the guy who planned your murder and then tried to woo your wife. <laughs> Pisces is no one. Looks like you go straight to hell, Pisces. <laughs> Sagittarius. Mark knows what he did, that fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, God. This is what? so good. This is such a, like, oh. Hogwarts sex where you'll get it on according to the Zodiac. Oh. The trophy Fetish room. of the month. <laughs> Jo Jonathan Taylor Thomas dressed as a lion. Uh, all right. I, I think I'm going to put a fork in this one. Okay. Uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Twitter at cryptopediacast. Uh, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. It's in the show notes. We've got two people who get shout outs basically every week for the past year. <laughs> you found something horrifying. Decorate your home for Christmas using only photos of Billy Corgan. I can't argue with that logic. Um, thanks, Clay and Clay Sinclair, and thanks, Marty Von Party. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you support us. <laughs> Alexander the Grape is back from the dead, unlike your grandma. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is about the right ending to this episode. Oh, uh, uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, boy, boy, this uh, cookie recipe will finally convince Santa cla to clap them cheeks. 
Oh, I'm dying. I, I don't even know if I want to finish this episode now. I'm dying. Because this, this, this lifestyle brand site has uh, changed my life. Why you should drink a gallon of vinegar a day? <laughs> How to bedazzle your butthole on a budget. The best ketchups to make any fancy steak better. So it's Christmas and you're still trapped in the corn maze. What now? <laughs> I tried I tried the rhythm method, but I chose four four times so I got pregnant with a ska band. <laughs> <laughs> Does the baby just like skank out? I guess. Oh. <laughs> Romantic mixtape songs that say, I want to do butt stuff. The oh. D&D character alignments of the shitty kids who appended my son's sixth birthday party. <laughs> That's on brand. Oh. Anywho, if you like this podcast, be sure to rate and review. Uh,. Subscribe to, I guess. Oh, jeez. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, send them. Especially send them to Brandon, because apparently he's out of ideas. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm looking at an article that says, "Is your tall neighbor plotting against you up there in the sky?" He might be. <laughs> I'm that tall neighbor. The I know. Answer is yes. Yeah, I know. That's why I said he might be. Sign our petition to blow up Mercury so Becky can't talk about dumb retrograde ever again. <laughs> it's, it's okay to eat turkeys because turkeys are sinners. <laughs> this website, why? Why does this website exist and why is it so funny? It's find out which Mambo number five girl you are based on your sign. Mm, how to resist the temptation to fart on the cake. You can do this. <laughs> Quiz, why are you so sticky? <laughs> uh, oh, which cryptids are best in bed exclusive? Wh what? <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, Mothman number one. is number Mothman. one number two Bad Squash number mm -hmm. three Flatwoods Monster number four The Grinning Man we've done all these guys the number grunch. five The Grunch what I've never heard I think that's a joke I think that's a joke Grunch is a sort of chupacabra hi lizard hybrid. Scales me on be, be unpleasant, but try to keep an open mind. Just be prepared for both. Okay, I'm not going to read a lot of this out loud. All right. Mm -hmm. um, do we get I to think the part turn. where I'm supposed to turn. start? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I'm just take. I, I was taking a test, a quiz. I'm Spider-Man. That's why I'm so sticky. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm John on Instagram. I'm at mew2057. On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. On email, I'm john at cryptopediacast.com. And now I have a new YouTube channel called Toy Office, where I talk yes. about toys. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll come to back to home. Oh, I, we already read that one. Damn it. I was trying to make it funny. Oh, here we go. Fetish of the month. That long, hard Tetris block. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. We're past the point of weird. It's 2020, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> World War Three was the clip. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh.
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna punch out. <laughs>